today is a big day, a uh, bit of a nervous one for me, as we're going to be putting our first major hole in the side of Indy, and that's to cater for our gas box, which will hold two four kilogram gas bottles. <laughs> So this is our gas box. We got it from DIY RV Solutions. And the brilliant thing about this one is that they tailor it to the contours of a Toyota Coaster. So it'll sit nice and flush and, uh, and look nice and neat on the side. So this is the double gas um, bottle box. It holds two four kilogram gas bottles. Um, and it comes with, obviously it's door which will hinge off the top here which we also need to install, but I'll show you that a bit later. Um, so this is gonna be going just behind this back uh, passenger side wheel here. So the gas box is one of many holes that we're gonna be um, sort of cutting up this end underneath the bed. So the gas box is gonna go here um, on the passenger side, and we're gonna to have to cut through that beam, the beam there next to the floor, a couple of those other support beams, cut a hole out and the gas box will come and sit flush on the floor. Um, it has quite a thin profile actually once you get it in, so it'll look quite nice, won't take up too much space. On the other side, we are gonna have the hot water heater, um, the outdoor shower kit, and also another inlet for the water tank. Um, we wanted to have both the gas box and the water heater on this side, but you can't cut. Well, if you do cut through these sort of cross braces, you need to then reinforce them. Um, in order for it to be legal, so we're not going to touch that and leave it as is. So we decided to move the gas onto this side. So the shower would be on the side of the bus that our camp sort of livable area isn't going to be. So we don't, you know, get water all through our sort of campsite. So this is where it's going. Ah, the first big hole. A little bit nervous about it. Let's get into it. So the first thing I need to do is essentially mark out on the bus where the tank's going to sit. Um, so to do that, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to cut out I'm going to cut out a strip of where I know it's going to sit where the contour is. I'm going to cut out a bit of that metal and that will give me a reference point that I can then take and line up with our water tank and base my measurements off that. So the contour will line up the sheet and I'll measure on the inside of the bus where to cut it. Okay, so I have finished marking out the cutting lines for the gas box. Um, I used this cut as a reference point for the height um, of where to where that nice little groove will sit um, and I used the lines on the bus that I believe were to be the straightest so for example this line here I don't know if you can see that there's a groove here so I use that as the true line for the sides or the vertical lines and then I use the groove here as the straight edge or the um, horizontal guideline um, when you do anything like marking out a bus, it's so hard to get straight edges or know what's square because nothing is square. So the best thing to do is to use guidelines on the bus. Um, so that way when you do install something, it'll at least look correct on the actual bus itself. So a little tip there. Um, a little bit nervous about making the rest of these cuts. Um, I have erred on the side of smaller because you can always make holes bigger. You can't put metal back in. So I have gone about half a centimetre or so, so five mil smaller than what I'd measured on the gas box and that's just to give me a little bit of leeway for human error, which I'm sure I'm bound to make a couple of mistakes. So.
Okay, so the rough cuts are done. Um, I'll have to come back and tie these edges up. But first, I'm going to come in and cut these pieces here to get this uh, into the floor. So it's nice and flush to the floor. So might have to get the articulating saw for this one, I think. So whilst my grinder battery is charging, because um, I've only got one decent battery which tends to work with the grinder and last longer, uh, I'm going to take this time to set up the hinge on the gas box and the gas box door. So they provide you with the hinge kit, so you get the hinge and you get um, a bunch of screws. Um, the way it works is you need to line it up on the inside like so, drill some holes up through uh, the gas box, screw it in and then the same on the, uh, on the door here, like so. So we'll go through that process now while we wait for the battery to charge up. So I've drilled the holes into the hinge, now I'm just going to mark out on the inside top of the box where it'll sit. You probably can't see but now I've got a faint mark there where I now know I need to drill. So we'll do that. I've attached the hinge on the side for the box now. I'm just going to drill the holes. I've already done two here. So I'm raining two for where the lid will screw into. It looks a bit weird, but it, it's uh, the hinge is made out of rubber, and once it's locked in, it actually holds it back. So you actually attach the hinge to the bottom side here um, of the lid, like so, and hinge in like that. So I'm just going to line up these holes and screw it in, and hope I get it right. So the um, gas box was from DIY RV Solutions. It also comes with its own lock system, which you need to install into the um, into the door. Um, this one is a, uh, a system that uses a push and sort of hinges, and then pushes up against the latch on the underside here. Um, it comes with sort of three different parts. This is the um, sort of the lock area where the key goes in. That'll sit on the actual the front of the door. And you've got this bracket which goes in behind. 
sits like so. And that side will go from the back behind the door and I'll meet where the door sort of seals itself. So if you could imagine that the, um, the latch is installed there on the floor, so we'll screw in some holes for that. Then this will be sitting on the door um, and that's it in its unlocked position. So when you push the door down and then lock it, you can see that that hinge comes in and will sit up against that latch and that'll keep it locked and closed so that the door can't move. And then when we unlock it, the hinge flips up and you'll be able to remove the door. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna to measure the distance from here up into the base of this so I know the height that it needs to sit and then also I want to center it across um, the front there. So we're going to do that now. So I'm going to use the seal here as my template for the hole cut because it should sit snug within that space. So I know the bottom point and I know the center point. So just line it up. is in or cut out it's um not a bad fit there's a little bit of some gaps in some parts um, but we'll be able to fix that up with a bit of sicker and some force but it's sitting pretty neat um, once we get the sealing in there and just sort of chock it up to dry that'll look really nice but it's sitting nice and has a Inside, my bad snug little fit here. So now I'm just using some um, rust guard primer just to coat the edges that have been cut by the grinder, just to make sure that they don't get rusted. So just going through, do a couple, we'll do a couple of coats of this um, just on these edges here. Um, we'll do on the inside edge too, just to be safe. Even here, um, all the way up and that'll give it some nice protection against any rust before we um, put in the, the gas box. So the rust guard primer is dry, so we can now install the box. Um, because the box sits a little bit off the ground, just to help it you know, remain stable in the hole when we're sealing it, and to give it a bit more strength underneath, we're just gonna use it for scrap wood, which happens to be the perfect thickness. Um, we're going to slide that underneath, the box will sit on top of that um, which will take some of the weight and the pressure off the box itself and the seal around the bus hole. We've decided that we're going to also put some bolts into this gas box to sort of help it keep it in place, add some extra strength. So I've just got some M5, uh, M6 got some bolts and I've just drilled some holes in the edges of the gas box. I've used tape. Um, put some tape down first before you drill because it helps stop the, um, the fiberglass from crackling and splinting away on the surface. 
and I'm going to use some nylon washers um, another side to also help with keeping it um, nice and secure and in place and also watertight so we're going to add the bolts in and we're also going to do the sticker flex as well and that'll keep it extra tight and extra secure making some little hooks out of um, gaffer tape which we will thread through some of these tie downs uh, and connect it to the opposite side of the bus and we'll just tighten them slightly just to hold help hold the gas box in place whilst all the secret flex and stuff is drying um, so I've just used some gaffer tape created little hooks and then I'm just adding some more tape around them just to secure it in so that when there's a little bit of pressure on there it'll hold nice and tight Some extra sicker on the top there. Uh, we've got the straps creating a little bit of pressure towards that way, holding it in place. Plus, I've also added a bit of a chock here uh, to put some pressure from that side as well. A bit of extra security, but it's looking quite nice so. Looking good. All we'll I have to do now is tape up the box and the bus, and we'll go around and we'll do that outside seal with um, some Sika Flex as well. I've taped the outside of the gas box and the gas box itself because we're going to put some Sika Flex around the edge, um, and that'll just give it a nice clean line when we pull off the tape after. And then I've gloved with my finger because I'm going to use some, some water after we pull the tape off just to smooth the edge just to make it nice and clean around the outside afterwards. Alright, let's get to it. Mm -hmm. 